that happens, instead of making two three carbon molecules, okay, this guy makes three phosphoglycerate and something called phosphoglycolate. And phosphoglycolate can be converted into glyoxylate. Does that sound familiar? Anybody seen that before? Where did you see that before? The glyoxylate cycle, right? And what organisms did I say had the glyoxylate cycle? Bacteria and plants. Okay. One of the reasons plants use that glyoxylate cycle is so that they can actually use glyoxylate to do things instead of just throwing it away. So glyoxylate is a byproduct of what's called photorespiration. And photorespiration occurs when this guy is taking oxygen instead of carbon dioxide. This guy being the Rubisco enzyme. Is the efficiency a function of the wavelength? No, because the efficiency is, is, an, is simply a reaction being catalyzed. The reaction being catalyzed has nothing to do with the light. Um, the efficiency, no. The efficiency is not the problem. That's not the problem with the efficiency. The efficiency of the problem really, really rides right here. The capture of the light energy by the uh, chlorophyll is pretty complete. That's pretty good. Yeah, the, the absorption is, is quite efficient. In fact, that's why I say probably solar cells themselves could do a pretty good job of, uh, of, making, of working better if they were as efficient at capturing the light as uh, chlorophyll itself is. OK, well, you guys, let's see. We have one last thing to talk about. And the last thing to talk about here is what's called the C4 pathway. The C4 pathway is also something that I find students get a little too confused about. And it's really not necessary to do that. The C4 pathway is a pathway that exists largely in tropical plants, although there are other examples of non-tropical plants that exhibit this pathway. What I've shown you up to this point has been something that occurs in what people call C3 plants. And the reason they're called C3 plants is the first products of the incorporation of carbon dioxide makes three carbon molecules. You had two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. C4 plants, the same reactions happen. So don't get confused. The very same reactions happen. They just happen in a different part of the plant. Okay? So for a C3 plant, these reactions are occurring on the cells on the outside, exposed to carbon dioxide, exposed to oxygen, exposed to the atmosphere, exposed to the sun very nicely. In C4 plants, the reactions occur buried in lower cells inside of the plant. Now, I'll, call, I'll show you why they call it C4 in a minute. But I want to emphasize that both C4 and C3 plants go through the Calvin cycle. Okay, They both go through the Calvin cycle. The question is, where in the plant does it occur? Well, the problem is that these reactions, if the Calvin cycle is occurring in, re in cells that are on the outside of the plant, the plant has to be as open as it can to the atmosphere to grab that carbon dioxide and do everything that it needs. And the problem with that is the more the plant is open to that sort of stuff, the more water it loses through evaporation. That means, therefore, that a plant that's just open like that is going to have a hard time being in a very, very warm envir environment, such as might be present in a tropical environment. Okay. So instead, those reactions are moved to an internal cell where it doesn't have to be open to the atmosphere. And other specialized cells are placed on the outside for grabbing that carbon dioxide. They don't have the water loss problem that the other cells do. OK. So well, how then does this cycle work if it's on the inside? Well, that means if it's on the inside, something has to bring carbon dioxide to it. And that's where the C4 comes in. C4 plants start with the incorporation of carbon dioxide not into 3-phosphoglycerate, but rather into the synthesis of oxaloacetate. That comes from PEP. PEP, the glycolysis intermediate, when it gains a carbon dioxide in the presence of an enzyme, whose name you should know, it's called PEP carboxylase. PEP carboxylase catalyzes the addition of carbon dioxide to PEP to make oxaloacetate. 
Exaloacetate has four carbons, and it's this molecule that gives them the name C4. Yes? Sure. So phosphoenyl pyruvate, so in a C4 plant, the following reaction occurs. Phosphoenyl pyruvate, PEP, grabs a carbon dioxide in the presence of PEP carboxylase. That makes a four carbon intermediate known as exaloacetate. That exaloacetate is converted to malate, just the backwards of a reaction in the citric acid cycle. Malate gets transported in to this cell that's going to do the Calvin cycle. The carbon dioxide gets dumped off. You're left behind with pyruvate. And now that carbon dioxide is present here. Now the beauty of this method is it allows for the concentration of carbon dioxide at a higher level than was present in the atmosphere out here. This cell is literally concentrating the carbon dioxide for this cell. And as a consequence, C4 plants are much more efficient than C3 plants are at using carbon dioxide. We don't have these, as much of the side reactions of oxygen because there's not as much oxygen present. We've got a higher concentration of carbon dioxide present. And C4 plants can do their thing much better than C3 plants can. Okay, that's a lot of stuff, I know. I said I wasn't going to give you too much data. Believe me, I'm sparing you quite a bit. Questions on what I just told you? How about a song? No? Okay. Oh, a song. Okay. I didn't hear any response. I don't know. I mean, maybe you guys don't like them. All right. A song. This is a song I wrote for this class uh, a year ago. It's called Photosynthesis is Divine. It's to the tune of Scarborough Fair. Photosynthesis is divine. Fixing carbon using sunshine. It's thanks to plants that we've got a prayer. They pull CO2 from the air. Reaping energy from the sun. It's efficient second to none. You grab the photons almost at will. Protoporphyrin chlorophyll. Light reactions of system two. Split up water making O2. Electrons pass through schemes labeled Z, pumping protons gradiently. ATPs may do to a shift of the proton spinning quite swift. An enzyme turbine cellular maze, you know as ATP synthase. Carbon's fixed onto a substrate. Ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. Rubisco acts inefficiently, splitting it into three PGs. If an oxygen enzyme grabs an O2, it makes glycolate, it is true. The Calvin cycle works in a wheel, giving plants a sugary meal. So photosynthesis is divine, cause it happens all of the time. From dawn to dusk and times in between, solar panels truly are green. Okay. It's an old Simon and Garfunkel song. Okay, so much for photosynthesis. Bye bye. Is that what I heard? <laughs> okay, let's turn our attention now to nitrogen metabolism in the last 10 minutes that we've got today. 
nitrogen metabolism is something that's been sort of overlaying all the things that we've been talking about so far, but you probably didn't think about it. Amino acids are full of nitrogen. And the movement of nitrogen in the atmosphere and in our bodies is interesting and it's complicated. No surprise at that, I suppose. Um, but how it gets there is problematic. We are incredibly dependent okay, upon the um, action of microorganisms in the soil that are able to convert nitrogen in the atmosphere into a reduced form that we can use. Without these microorganisms doing this, life on Earth would pretty much go away. Okay? So if you want to think about things where we talk about, think about polluting the soil or polluting the water or um, causing problems, and we think about large organisms on the face of the Earth and we're killing off cheetahs or we're killing off um, various fish or whatever, if you want to get scared about something, get scared about killing off the microorganisms that fix the nitrogen. Because without that, we're going to be in deep doo-doo. Okay? So what I'm trying to impress on you is that the incorporation of nitrogen from the atmosphere is important. And it's very, very difficult to do, as we shall see. Okay? So we're very, very dependent upon these organisms. Nitrogen in the uh, uh, biosphere has a cycle as such. As I said, it's pulled from the atmosphere uh, by nitrifying organisms in the soil. and that allows that nitrogen to be used ultimately to make amino acids. And those amino acids, of course, are what make up proteins and allow life uh, as we know it. So what I want to do is spend a couple minutes talking about how that uh, nitrogen is actually grabbed by these organisms. Okay. This depicts um, schematically what happens during the um, reduction of nitrogen to um, some useful uh, process. Nitrogen in the atmosphere looks like this guy right here. It has 10 electrons. In the process, it's got to gain six electrons to get reduced so that it can form two ammonias that look like this guy right here. Okay? That process requires a total of six electrons, but more importantly, it actually requires 16 ATPs per nitrogen molecule reduced. Okay? 16 ATPs per nitrogen molecule reduced. A very intensive process in terms of energy. It's catalyzed by an enzyme known as nitrogenase, N-I-T-R-O-G-E-N-A-S-E. -E. Nitrogen fixing bacteria have this enzyme and they've got various sub-enzymes that are in there that do this. The important thing is that nitrogenase is very, very much killed by oxygen. It's a very anaerobic requiring environment in which this must occur. Nitrogen fixation, there's many different types of organisms that fix nitrogen, but one of the common types of nitrogen fixation occurs in bacteria in the roots of plants known as legumes. So peanuts, for example, are legumes. Beans are legumes. They have these bacteria that take the nitrogen from the atmosphere. And what they do is they leave it behind in the soil, or they help, in this case, the plant uh, to um, uh, use that nitrogen. And there's a symbiotic relationship that occurs in legumes between these two. The net result, is that a question? I saw a hand with me. I thought I saw a question. Okay. The net result is that nitrogen from the atmosphere is being useful to plants. And of course, plants are eaten by animals to do other things. Glutamine turns out to be a very important amino acid in the scheme of things because glutamine participates in nitrogen transfer. 